I know I've done a video about this in the past, but I'd be remiss if I didn't bring it up. I miss TNA. I really do. Like, I go back to the early time of doing videos on the old Off The Rope Show channel, like starting in late 2010 and on through to like 2012, 2013. You know, we used to do the WWE reviews and videos and commentaries and so forth. And I had that with the other guys that were on the show. Uh, and, you know, WWE was a thing that we got together and watched as a group. We talked about as a group. We enjoyed sometimes crapping on the product as a group, right? But TNA for the channel was my baby. That was my thing. That was the place that I could be creative in how I talked about the reviews. That was the place that I could try different things. That was the place that I could have fun. And when it came to TNA, you know, there was that plucky underdog element to it that AEW does not have. Like you could sit there and pretend AEW is an underdog. They have a billionaire behind them. They have a seemingly really good relationship with Warner Brothers Discovery. They have multiple prime time cable television programs. No, they're not some type of plucky overachieving underdog. If anything, they're underachieving, underperforming relative to the resources they have behind them. You know, unreasonable wrestling fans, as many as could possibly exist, can dispute and debate what I just said there. But TNA was never that. This was started in 2002 under a weekly pay-per-view business model. And it took them a couple of years to even get a cable television show. AEW started off with that shit from day one. TNA felt more like ECW in certain respects than an AEW does. That's for damn sure. But over the years of watching TNA, like it was astounding to me how the company could have something fantastic and wonderful. Like you would have some of the stuff involving Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle. You would have all these other young lions that come into the fold like the main event mafia, just young lions like Booker T and Sting and Scott Steiner and Kevin Nash, just trying to get ahead and Kurt Angle in the business, just trying to get that opportunity, just trying to get that shot at glory. And then you had the grizzled, you know, TNA originals and the TNA vets like AJ Styles and Samoa Joe that you associated with the company. You know, down the road, you had Beer Money, James Storm and Robert Roode. You had the Motor City Machine Guns. You know what I mean? Like, I could go on and on. The point of getting at even the stupid shit sometimes was hilarious. Like, Shark Boy, give me a shell, yeah, and Curry Man, and all consequences, Creed, and I could go on. Like, they were the plucky, almost can't do right underdog. But every once in a while, they would give you something. Like the Jay Lethal Ric Flair woo off. Scott Steiner math comes from TNA. Like I've just given you a couple of the greatest moments in my wrestling lifetime, and they came from TNA. You would get lots of stupid and lots of shit, but then you would get this incredibly magnificent match, this incredibly magnificent moment. Like, I still think back to one of my favorite times as a wrestling fan was kind of that summer to fall to 2011 for a variety of different factors, but one of them was the build-up to Sting versus Hogan at Bound for Glory. God, I had so much fun at that time. Just sign up and down in line, Hulkster! So I miss TNA. And it has been something as a wrestling fan that's been lacking for me for a few years now. AEW just... I have tried. It just does not fill that void. I even tried to go back and, you know, undercover kind of, like try to watch Impact Wrestling and it was terrible. And I said, no, I can't, I can't do this, <laughs> right? Because all I'll be thinking about the whole time is how it's not TNA. So you can imagine when in the few days ago, you know, Impact Wrestling, 
tweeted out the video clip talking about TNA Wrestling is returning at Hard to Kill in January. I was excited. Like initially, I got very caught up in the moment, right? TNA, TNA. Because I'm chasing the ghost of something that used to be, but never will be again. Is TNA wrestling back? The most literal answer is technically yes, because it's a branding, it's a name change. But in terms of functionality, practicality, hell fucking no. When I think about TNA back in the day, I think about the best women's division in the business, bar none, period, not even close. I think about a mix of some young lions. I think about a mix of some young guys that were also grizzled veterans. I think about guys, you know, the face that run the place, like AJ Styles, who meant so much to TNA over the years and was so closely associated with the brand. Same thing with Samoa Joe. I mean, the man got kidnapped by ninjas and we never found out what happened, for fuck's sake. But you would have all these guys like Angle there. You had Sting there. I'm not saying his name. I'm not saying his name. You know I'm not going to talk about the fucking founder, so don't bring it up. But even there, see, like, TNA could move me in my emotions in a way, perhaps, that no wrestling company in history has ever been able to do. WWF slash WWE, WCW, ECW, AEW, Ring of Honor. Nah. None of them could evoke, invoke such strong, across-the-spectrum emotions like TNA could. So you can put whatever name you want on it, but this is not TNA wrestling. I'm seeing reports talking about they're not going to bring back the six-sided ring. If you're not going to bring back the six-sided ring, it's not fucking TNA, period. If you're not going to go back to doing your shows at Universal Studios, it's not TNA. It's not. If you're not going to have Dixie Carter involved, it's not TNA. The only thing, and I emphasize by God, the only thing that could make this work is you give me Sting versus CM Punk at Bound for Glory 2024. God damn you. Like, this feels much more like a move for a company that is a combination of desperate to move the needle a little bit for themselves now, combined with desperate to try and attach themselves to something from the past. And how well is that really going to work? Because a name is just a name if you don't have a brand eager identity to support and to reinforce it. It doesn't matter if you call it TNA. It doesn't matter if you call it Impact Wrestling. It doesn't call it matter if you call it third-rate wrestling. It is about what you do. And, you know, you can talk about Scott Demore, whatever you want. Like, Impact Wrestling has shown nothing to me to indicate that I would want to watch that product on a weekly basis. I look at the talent roster. They got a f- couple folks. They're like, obviously, Trinity, right? Would make me watch. But that's just for her stuff, nothing else. Like, who else is there? What other type of interesting, compelling stuff do they have? Like, apparently, the Motor City Machine Guns, like, Alex Shelley's their world champ, and Chris Sabin's the X Division champ. I guess these two young lions, have they reached young lion status, folks? I don't know. I'm just saying. Like, I want the old TNA back, believe me. I do. But you could put a new name on a bland wrestling company, and it's just a new name on the same bland wrestling company. Impact Wrestling is bland, period. If it was better, more people would watch, also period. If they want to actually be TNA again, then they need to be TNA again. That means six-sided ring. That means all the shit that TNA used to do, you do that, right? Short matches, <laughs> some dumb, crazy shit, but have something spectacular. Bring in some young lions. 
Have them work against the griddle, grizzled vets. Have the young lions always go over. Like that's what you do. That's TNA. Because if you don't, it's just anything going to piss me off because it's going to feel like you're bastardizing something that frankly meant so much to me as a wrestling fan back in the day. Like 2011 to 2012 is the most fun I've ever had as a wrestling fan. And some of that certainly was due to the show. And a good portion of that is due to what TNA used to be. I wish it could be again, but this name change to me in no way indicates that's going to happen.